So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're gonna have a look at how we turn these drawings into overlays. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the, the contrast of these line drawings, um, either in a video format or in a still image format, um, so that we could overlay them on top of a video. So the video we'll be overlaying onto, we've dropped this down onto the timeline already, but you can obviously pick your own video. And essentially we're gonna drop some of these uh, graphics on top of, of this video. And essentially we're either gonna have a black line drawing or a white line drawing um, that is placed over the top um, of this image. So we'll jump in and have a look at the overlays that we have and we can work with. And I'm just gonna change my zoom level to fit here so we can see uh, the drawings um, that we're working with. So we'll go for a still image first um, and then we'll look at how we can work with video images as well. So I'm gonna drag this down to the timeline now you can do some of this work that we're about to do in Photoshop, but I'm trying to keep everything in Final Cut Pro 10 because I know that not everyone watching these videos will be using Photoshop as well. Um, but by using the levels um, and the saturation in Photoshop, you can create your own still images. And I've done a couple um, here where I've taken drawings and then pushed and pulled the levels, which is essentially the, the same as what we'll be doing with the color correction here in Final Cut Pro. So in order to, to kind of push and pull the contrast, we need to bring up the color board. So you can either use the shortcut to bring up the color board, which is Command and 6, or we can come up to our color board button here and show the color board, and this will bring us into the color boards. So up in my inspector on the top right, once I've shown the color board, I'm gonna to go to my exposure, and I'm gonna drop the, the blacks right down, and then I'm gonna lift up my, my whites, okay? So here we can basically start to really add some high contrast um, into this image until all the whites are uh, kind of brilliant whites and all the blacks um, are much darker. So the next thing we're gonna do here, and I'm just gonna pull the brightness of this up a little bit more so that we lose a little bit more of this banding, is we're gonna go into the, the saturation um, for this image and pull the saturation right down. So essentially we're turning this image um, into a very high contrast image here. And we can push this a little bit more, I think. So I'm actually gonna go back to the options here, uh, the color correction, and I'm gonna come down to my effects down here and we'll go into color and we're gonna add on a second color correction. So we can actually add two color corrections on here, which is gonna enable us to kind of push the, the whites up just that little bit more and pull the blacks down a little bit more. So we weren't quite getting exactly uh, what we wanted um, with that first bit of color correction because the image was a little bit fine. So here now we've got a pretty good knockout of the image. We can work on some of the edges um, here and in a little bit. So keep your image selected and then we're gonna come up to the inspector again, go back here. And here now we're gonna change our blend mode to multiply, which is gonna multiply uh, that drawing um, with the image in the background. So you can see we've got this sketch kind of hovering over the image. Now one thing we can do with the image in the background to kind of accentuate this drawing over the top of our video um, is to add some color correction to that too. So I'm just gonna go to the color board with my video selected and I'm going to lift up the blacks a little bit and drop down the whites. So just pull up the midtones just to kind of lighten up that image. And you can see now with the multiply um, on that image above, the drawing above, we're getting a nice blend of that image on the background. So you can try darken um, or multiply over this image. It certainly seems that multiply is um, working a little better. This would also work quite nicely um, if we add um, something like a, a tint uh, so we can colorize our background image um, so if we add that we get this kind of nice uh, vibrant color where we're remapping the the whites and blacks to to different colors so if i remap my white and black to a couple different colors then you get some neat effects with the, the kind of drawings hovering over your video now one thing you might notice here is that at the top uh, left here the edge of the piece of paper here showing up and this is showing up here as well so what I can use to kind of get rid of that um, is a mask and we're going to use the draw mask I'll drag this onto my clip and then with the draw mask we can simply with that selected and um, we can click around our image and I'm clicking and holding to kind of add these curves and that's enabling me to kind of draw a nice curved line around the image and then we'll just do a little bit of feathering um, so that we blend that image in um, a little bit more. 
So you can see we've got a little bit of a darker edge around here and that comes from the, the multiply effect um, from the, the foreground image. So I'll just decrease the feather actually here in this case um, so that we're pulling uh, the edge of the image in and we can increase it or decrease it depending on um, how things are working out. So now I'm going to go back to my video options up here in the top left and we can transform the scale of this drawing and then we can go to the transform properties and kind of move this around, um, change the scale up or down um, and then modify how it's working. So we'll leave this uh, drawing out and we'll have a look at uh, a couple of other options that we have here. So if I bring on one of these uh, rotating squares that I've created, we'll drag this down to the timeline and I'm going to retime this so it's moving a bit more quickly in the rotation. Okay, so we've got this uh, kind of rotating square that we can use. And now what we're going to do with this is we're going to inverse it. So we're going to bring up the color board for this square and then come to our exposure. And instead of pulling the blacks down to darken them, we're going to pull them right up to lighten them. So if I lighten that and then pull this down to darken it, you can see we're getting uh, the background blacks as a dark image and we can pull the paper, the white of the paper, right down so that it becomes a, a black uh, image. So these two pull down and then the blacks kind of pushed up. And again, we can add extra color correction from our color options here um, to kind of accentuate that. So if I pull another color window on here, I can come to the color correction and in this case now then the white's up because we've already lightened them. Um, so that we get a bit more brightness, a bit more punch in there. And then what we can do is pull down the saturation for this image overall. So now with this set up like this, we can come to our blend modes and change this to lighten. And now we're gonna end up with this drawing um, hovering over the top of that image in the background. So again, we can try lighten um, or we can try screen to get different effects um, with that blending in the background and you'll get different effects with those different kind of filters. We'll jump in now to the draw mask and drop this on here and then we can just quickly put some bezier points around here. Now we can animate these bezier points as well so if at any point we kind of pop over the edge like this then we can turn on keyframing here for our control points in the inspector and that means now that we can actually drag these control points around um, as we're, we're kind of moving around. So if here we want the keyframe back down, so I'm gonna zoom out to 25% so I can see it and pull it back. And then we can just move through this and you can see that keyframe at the top animating. And we're just bumping a little bit too close to the edge there. So we'll pull this one up. And I think we've got a pretty good mask of that now. So now we can go back to the transform options um, here. We can scale this down and we can also hold down the alt key and duplicate it on the timeline so we end up with multiple versions of this uh, square bouncing around on top of our video. So here you can see how those drawings can be placed over the top of a video um, either by darkening um, and this drawing here um, isn't perfect. I think if I was to change this, I would do it um, as a darker line. So something like this star um, would work a bit nicer. So if I drag this on um, and copy this clip, come to my star here and go to edit and paste attributes, we can hopefully um, see that that star is going to be a bit darker on the background. And in fact, we can keep the draw mask, but work with um, darken rather than multiply because that pen is uh, a lot darker for the, the star so you can see that drawing is a much better drawing to use um, with a much darker pen rather than the, the sketchy pencil um, that we used um, for some of these drawings. So that's a quick overview um, of how to place images into your timeline in Final Cut Pro 10 and we've got a couple different options there in terms of blending and compositing the images but you should get a good idea of uh, the different types of things you can do there uh, with those images and working with 
the camera movement um, to create the animation of those images um, can be quite a, a nice way of kind of either zooming in or zooming out um, of an image. So I've got a couple of other examples here where we've got a zoom in or a zoom out to, to one of those images which would work quite nicely as a graphic overlay. We can also, um, with something like this as well, um, work with images that we create in Photoshop with the same type of technique. So we could take a still frame um, from Final Cut Pro, draw over it in Photoshop, in Photoshop layers, and then import those layers back into Photoshop. And that's something I'll cover um, in a later tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, there's a lot of different steps um, to creating these overlay drawings. And if you have any questions, then don't hesitate to send me a tweet at Ben Housel or leave a comment below. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.